And all right, on the last episode, we talked about the parts, including the air intake manifold, and the rods, and of course, the 87 ITR crank. And before we go in depth with the rods, here's the new parts or up the parts update of what the owner got. And before we delve into all the cool stuff, we're going to test fit the crank and see how it goes. And of course, we resurfaced. We had the block resurfaced, so it's going to be good, right? So the question now is, shall we reboard this or even resleeve it to go two liter stick around and find out why we're considering it all right we start off with Taking the initial measurements or the initial weight of the pistons okay, with the notepad and the gram scale, the digital gram scale. All right. Now we check with number one, piston number one first. And of course, you gotta do this like three or, or two to three or even four times just to get the consistent weight before you write it down. Wait, one more. Okay, yep, yep, yep. All right. So it's piston number one is 323.81 grams. All right. We, it, it's important to get the initial weight be used before you start, you know, adjusting it because we also have to weigh in the piston pins. And so we can choose and match the piston pin just to minimize the amount of material that you need to remove on the pistons. And of course, that would match it all together. And it's a practice that's, you know, it's quite good. So you can remain consistent. Okay, so it's 322.01 grams. All right, so now number three. Let's go check it. Sometimes, you know, you have to try it like three or four times or even five times just to get the consistent measurements or the, of the weight, of course. Okay, one more. Again, again, wait, okay, actually, yeah, it's good. So it's 324.91 3, grams. All right. Oh, that's quite far. Okay, now let's go with number four. One more. Number, number, number three is quite heavy, but yeah, we're gonna adjust that once we start you know, adjusting the weight and even lightening the pistons. And we're going to talk about that and show you guys the tricks that we do on that. So don't worry about that. One more, one more, just to be sure. Okay. It's 324.50. Wait. Again, 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 just to be sure. One more. Because I was thinking 0.48, but it's, yep, yep, it's 0 0.50, okay. All right, so it's 324.50 grams. All right, so there you go. Okay, well, now you see all the weight, right? Yep, now let's look at it closer. All right, now we unclip the phone. Let's go zoom in. Well, not really zoom in, just move the phone closer. Yep. All right, now let's go with the main bearings, rod bearings, and the thrust washers. Yes, ACL, yo. All right, the rod bearings will do that. We'll check on that later because we haven't really done the finishing touches on the polished rods. Okay, here's the main. We just double check just to make sure, you know, didn't, you know, mistakenly pack the B20 or single overhead cam main bearings because they also fit, just the tanks are the on the wrong spot okay it's correct okay wait let's go to the engine stand to the block oh wait and also the crank we can't really test fit without the crank yo all right let's go now here's the block freshly decked just so it's flat so that you get a superior superior head gasket ceiling when we assemble all right let's turn this so so we go to the main bearing saddles all right Wait, now let's put the lock. We don't want the block turning all around. Get it. Oh, gotta pull it back. It started pushing forward. 
there, all right? Just a bit more, okay, there, all right, there. Okay, now we get the ACL main bearings. Let's go. Here it is, look, yes, sir, all right? Now we're gonna install this by hand. Make sure the bearing saddle is clean from dirt and all the grime. So you just, you know, you touch it and check it if it's clean. And you hand, hand install and fit the main bearings. Because what's important here is you make sure the left and right side of the main bearings on the saddle, it's, it fits and it aligns well. Because you can install this cockeyed and still put the main be main bearing caps or main caps and still torque it. In the end, you just, you know, F up the main bearing. It might run, but hey, not for long. All right. Okay, now let's see. Oh, yeah. All right. Now let's go get the crank. And okay, because we're doing the mock-up, this is a Shell Helix 10W40 oil we put in this bottle. So we're just gonna use this, not assembly lube, because we're just doing a mock-up. And of course, this is gonna spin lighter, but we also go for the assembly lube spinning lighter when fully assembled. And we'll get to that later on in the series, so don't worry. All right, there you go. Now let's go get the crank. Oh yeah, 1800. Yes, sir. All right, now it's an ITR. All right, now we lube the main journals. And then we time-lapse this on the main caps because, you know, it's going to take too long because it's going to be hand-tight first initially. Okay, there you go. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go with the first step. Okay, it's 18 feet-pounds torque. It's actually... 18 on the middle and then 22 on the outer but it's much the same so to go with the 18 on all of the main caps okay this one we won't time lapse because it's gonna be fast enough or it's it's actually quite quick that it doesn't get too boring plus you know we get to hear the click yes sir all right now it's the outer number one main and the number five main all right Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, now to the center mains. All right, let's go. The center mains, Honda calls for 49 feet pounds torque. Oh, yeah, you can hear the click is loud, right? Yes, sir. And you know, the reason why this is 49 is because the center mains has that this aluminum girdle. So when, as the engine gets warm, that expands, so it gets tighter. So if you do 56, it might end up being 60 when warm. Now onto the outside, the one and five main cap, it's 56 feet pounds torque, just like the B20. Because the B20 has no main cap, so it's 56 all throughout. Yes, sir. It's clicking loud, right? Yep, now onto the last one, number five, mean. Yes, all right. So now let's check this, back, get this back to zero so that, you know, it's it remains calibrated good, the torque wrench. All right, wait, now let's turn this. All right, wipe my hands first. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that sound because that sound is the 19 millimeter socket on the snout of the crank because we leave it there so that, you know, in case I want to turn it with a ratchet handle, I'll just pop it in. But, you know, just leave it there because we don't have to look for it, right? And yes, look at that. It spins freely and it's not even assembly loop. So yes, so let's go now and double check this and we're gonna show you something now before we disassemble this once again because that's how we do it when we build we take two to three times this assembly or assembly just to mock up everything good okay now we turn the block so we can talk about the breather system or at least the oem breather system and how we're gonna work around it okay we, we pull the block back it moved forward again because when we turn it okay more and more. All right. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. it. Come on. Be careful. Don't pull it too hard. It might fall. 
Okay, here, as you can see here on the B16B or even B16A, there's a factory breather there. But unlike the B20, it doesn't have it. So what we do is this, we actually put two extra fitting to have a breather. But this is actually just a breather, not a crankcase evacuation system because it doesn't evacuate unlike this. So you can see, let's put the OEM black box. This is connected to the positive crankcase pressure valve or PCV. This pulls vacuum at mid throttle, even at idle. This way it pulls crankcase pressure from the block out you know it lets it vent it so we're going to connect one here this one's going to happen for a breather for a full throttle or when we on heavy use but this way when you let go of the throttle or an idle you have cranky evacuation altogether and it's crucial because this will be used for hill climb and also the street so that's very very important so now let's show you this issue all right now because this runs pct pistons that's npr that's 0 0.040 oversized so this has been bored out and look at that it doesn't reach where the piston rings pass or scrape but look it looks like it's seeping coolant inward from the outside wait let me show you get closer and you can see there that rust is kind of deep i mean not deep like it's scarred but it's like it's rusting right after it runs or on cool down it probably sucks in the pressure from the coolant into the bore and because it's below the piston ring travel it doesn't smoke but i consulted the owner and the owner said it pressurizes coolant or the radiator so hmm that makes sense so now the plan here i consulted the owner is either we can have this dry sleeved and run the same pistons or have it dart and sleeved style and go 84. And that will be a mighty two liter, right? With the air CF intake manifold. But of course, we're going to check on the costing for now because it's not that it doesn't have budget or the project doesn't have budget. It's just that we want to spend reasonable amount to get the even greater power, not crazy spending. Okay, so the owner decided to get the Speed Factory fuel rail. So it's going to fit well on the air CF intake manifold because it needs a proper aftermarket fuel rail. So here, let's go check this out. Yeah, I've seen that. I've had, I've, I've seen this before, not had, because Jasper has this for his next project. Oh yeah, it looks really, really good. Has all the good fittings for the fuel rig. Uh, in inlet and outlet so yep it's gonna be really good it's complete with fittings and all that yep all right and the other good thing or the other cool thing is the owner decided to get ferreya 5500 series valves this way we're not gonna risk if the valves are worn or burned out on the exhaust or whatever this is gonna be brand new so yep it's going to bump the compression like 0.3, so that's even. It's going to be even higher and probably better. It's just going to need to be tuned really, really well. But yep, this is going to work really good. Let me cut this open and show you guys. I mean, everybody knows it, but hey, unboxing this stuff is always going to be fun, right? Yes, sir. It's brand new. Flat-faced and... What I like, what I love about this is the stem here is thinner, giving giving it even better flow. So yeah, let's close this up now. So of course, the head right now, as we speak, is actually I'm actually in the middle of porting it, so it's getting cleaned up. And of course, when we talked about the crankcase evacuation system earlier, you can click here, or it will be in the description below. So don't worry about it. On this video, because it extensively talks about the crankcase evacuation and the proper breather system and all that so it's going to help you
create even better power and efficiently. And understand, of course, you know, because understanding is really an important aspect of all the projects and all the builds. So, hey, you know, this one is going to be really good. And of course, you got to subscribe so that you're updated. And of course, hit the like button. This way it gets spread out to a wider audience and everyone gets to enjoy the content that we do. So, hey, either we stay 1800 or go 84 bore. You will know, and of course, when the episode is done, you can click here.